what to do with something like that. I don't know what to do with that. I'd be happy to. Huh? I'll be happy to because I can take the notes from the video. All right, that'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Assessors, except we're not tax assessors. Earl Wellington used to always bristle up about that. We don't set the taxes. We put a value on the property. The county commission, the industrial authority, the school boards, all of those, you know, turn in what they need. Um, and 
and then like the taxes were based on what the property is valued at. And this is a massively oversimplified explanation. But and like I said, there are 48 pieces of property in the county. The assessors do not have the staff to go through and look at every sale every year on those 48,000. So Silas will probably cringe when I do this as an explanation, but if you take Lowndes County and divide it up and say from 12 to 3, 3 to 6, 6 to 9, 9 to 12, one year they do this one, the next year they do from um, 3 to 6, the next year from 6 to 9, then from 9 to 12. Well, what that means is uh, if yours was done in 2015 from 12 to 3, it may be 3 or 4 or 5 years before it gets back around to your property. When it does, then people say, well, my value went up 20%. Actually, let's say my taxes, but again, we don't set the taxes. But they say, well, my value went up 20% well, in one year. It didn't. It went up 20% over that four or five years. The other thing that happens, getting into a little more detail, is that if you've got two subdivisions and you've got a lot of activity in this one, a lot of sales, and you got very little in this one, then this one gets the attention because if you've got sales, if it's going up or down, you've got comparables. You know, if this property, this property, this property, this property all go up, it affects the value of every prop every other property. If the subdivision next door doesn't have a lot of activity and it's very similar, their properties are going up too, but you got no comparables. You got no indication of that. You got no sales to work from. So these will go up faster than these, or down. It just depends on which way the sales are going. Uh, so the appraisers at the assessor's office, because of the sales, have to keep up with these and will concentrate on these. You know, we say appraisers, but it's not an appraiser like Brown Alwyn or Freddie Vajodian. The Department of Revenue uh, sets, it's called mass appra appraisal techniques, which means that if I've got a house, and I use subdivisions because it's easier to make the comparison, but if I've got a house um, next to your house, and mine needs carpet, it needs a roof, the grass is this high, I got goats in the backyard, and yours is perfect. They're gonna take the sales in that neighborhood and break it down to a price per square foot and apply it equally to yours and mine. Even though mine's not worth what yours is, even though maybe the same size. So again, it's mass appraisal techniques. We don't have the staff, and you don't, and everybody doesn't want us going in writing things down about your house. Now, if, then, if I don't like what mine has been assessed at compared to yours, you know, because I can say mine's not worth that. His may be, but mine's not. It needs a roof. So I can go down to the assessor's office and say mine needs a roof. You guys are nuts. <coughs> and Silas will send somebody out there to look at it. Um, and they may adjust it. You know, that's, your first, that's your first avenue of appeal. Um, speaking of, Silas is called the chief appraiser. That means he's like the president of a company. The three assessors are like you know, semi-comparable to uh, people on the board of directors. You know, we have one official meeting a month, but generally Silas drags us in a couple of times a month for special meetings to make decisions on, on stuff that we have to make decisions on. But you know, I have thoughts and they go one ear and out the other and meet no resistance. Uh, what was that talking about? You guys have so much of the same problem you guys. <laughs> 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 you were talking about a process. Got a deal. Got a call. Meetings. It's just like uh, uh, 
a guy called me about this reevaluation, and he said that his and the neighbor's buildings, this is commercial, were vastly different, built at different times. His was bigger, I'm excuse me, they were both the same size, but his was much older. So he called, and one of the appraisers from the office went out, looked at his building, and said, you know, you're right, and adjusted it. But that's, that's a, a, an adjustment based on fact or, or condition that won't show up in that mass appraisal techniques, just like my house and your house. You know, you got new carpet, I don't. You know, my dogs ate the carpet or something. Uh, they don't know that. The appraisers don't know that, they can't. So there are several things that affect the, the value of the house, and if you call the assessors and they say, yeah, you're right, then it can be adjusted at that point. That's a little more informal. If but the, but the next serious appraisal, the next thing up the line, is to appeal it to the Board of Tax Equalization, which is a group of people appointed by the grand jury. <clears throat> the assessors have nothing to do with them. They're completely independent. Um, I served on that. Leroy Butler served on that. Uh, Earl Wellington served on that. Um, so Leroy, Leroy is a very good choice. If you know him, he's got experience already. If it's my wife, I'm not here. <laughs> uh, the, the way that the appeal before the Board of Tax Equalization works is you get your facts together and you go up and the Board of Tax Equalization members are sort of like a jury. You make your case, the assessor's office makes theirs, they make a decision. Sometimes we agree with that decision, sometimes we don't. Um, you know, we are not hand in hand. Sometimes they think we're idiots, sometimes we think they're idiots. Uh, and sometimes we actually may agree. Uh, but that's your next appeal. And your deadline for that is August 10th. And if you've got any question at all about how yours is valued, file for that appeal. That doesn't mean you still can't come to the assessor's office and say, wait a minute, you got a barn here and there's not a barn there. You know, that means you can't still do that. But file for that appeal and get your ducks in a row and be ready to make your appeal. We'll make ours. Um, a lot of those appeals, you know, I encourage people to make the appeal, but a lot of those appeals will be dropped before it gets around to the hearing, you know, because a lot of that stuff will be worked out. But there's a limit to what we can do because the Department of Revenue can get nasty about what we're supposed to do. Earl Wellington, the way I got into this is Earl Wellington and Fred Deloach came to me and warned me Earl was going to retire. And he died, unfortunately, about six months later. Warned me to run because Earl spent 16 years dragging that office up from what it had been at one time. You know, if you walked in there and you were a friend of one of the assessors, wow, man, just I'll drop your taxes altogether. And if you weren't, then your taxes went up. That ain't right. So Earl straightened all that out. But Earl came to me and Fred Deluxe came to me. And I have a lot of respect for both those gentlemen. And they wanted, they said, Ron, no. I said, we'll pay you. I said, no. I got $100 from both of them, I think. <laughs> but I agreed to do it. And it's not necessarily a job where everybody thinks you and pat you on the back. It's also not one that too many people understand, which is why I've gone through the... the the levels that they are. Um, give me a second here. I think of it eventually. When you're ready, we got questions. Mm -hmm. When you're ready, we got questions. Ask them. <laughs> but I'd rather a question come from somebody besides you first. <laughs> <laughs> you looked at me when you said that. It was by accident. 
<laughs> this is the future development map from the comprehensive plan that the county and all the cities in it spent a lot of time developing. Check this out, but you can find it online easily enough. And you notice how it has this nice green area around the edges of most of the county, particularly across the north part here. Now, if we compare that, if you look on page 21, they did print this out for you again. This is what's titled the Rural Land Accessibility Codes, and the color is the red is the highest valuation, which runs in a big wide path from the north edge of Valdosta all the way to the county line with no green at all. It would certainly appear that the tax assessors did not look at the comprehensive plan. Is that really the case? How much does Alex Ellis hit on that one a minute ago? The comprehensive plan, how much does that affect the value of the properties just because it is a comprehensive plan? That is the question, isn't it? The comprehensive plan says things like this area up here is supposed to be primarily for agriculture and development should stay mostly inside this red line, which is the existing county water and sewer at the time. Um, to put it another way, you, you said it's more convenient if you think about subdivisions and houses. I understand that, if I'm not mistaken, you're a realtor, right? Okay, but I used to be before. <laughs> Before some of the recent elections, yeah. Some of us grow pine trees and grow crops and things like that, and we may think those are more valuable than subdivisions and houses. I don't want to argue that. Well, what's your point? What's the question? This plan drives development straight into the agricultural area of the county. What you're saying uh, is what you're saying is that somebody who wants to do something here can't do it here? What I'm saying is the way you value this, as you've said, the most valuable property is going straight north from Valdosta right into the agricultural areas of North Wiles County. And, and I have something to say then too because this has been really bugging me. Um, one of the criteria that's used is access to transportation or roads. And US 41 South is a four-lane highway that goes south from Valdosta all the way to Lake Park. But that's not valued in that area as a highly valued area. Of, they have a better road. Better road. It's four lanes wide. So why wasn't that property given this double? I mean, everybody's sitting here because their valuation doubled. Why didn't... The bottom part of the county on a big fancy highway get double. So Alice, you want to take that? Sure. I don't think <laughs> we don't set those boundaries. The uh, comprehensive plan? Yeah. No, yeah. no. You said you just sent out new tax valuations. You did set them. Yeah, but we don't set the comprehensive plan. I'm not talking about the comprehensive plan. I'm talking about the red that's on what's in your map. The, the, our map, those accessibilities, yeah. those are set by, based on benchmark sales that were actually used in the, uh, the reevaluation. So it, it's, you know, what we did is they were broken down, they were mapped out where the sales happened, and those benchmark sales were used to establish based on where the sales were and the appraiser's uh, knowledge of the area to, and geographic boundaries, you know, where it made sense, you know to make a split where that accessibility actually began and ended. So that's how those were set, not in, they weren't influenced by the, uh, the uh, comprehensive plan. Well, that, that's the very first question. Why weren't they influenced by the comprehensive plan? Because the comprehensive plan does not set the value on a piece of property. If you've got a house on this side of that line, and I've got one on the other side, and there are two or three houses also on both sides of that line. That line is not going to affect the value of either one. But talking about houses. Well, let, let, let me interject here. Uh, the values are set by the market. Yes. Their, their interpretation is based on the data of the sales. Is, is what uh, everything is done the way it's supposed to. The sales are going to dictate 
these zones that they can map out. Let's talk about sales then. This yellow down here east of Lake Park. Or wait a minute, let's get let's get back to that one just a second. Mm -hmm. If you got six out, if you got a subdivision, in we, we're not subdivisions. We're talking about the rural reevaluation. All right. If you got rural property, and that line goes right through the middle of a handful of rural properties, and these rural properties sell more for these, and I'm again, I'm oversimplifying, but these sell more than these. Okay. We're not. We don't look at that line. That line's got nothing to do with what this sells for versus what this sells for. So what you're telling us is the whole county is valued for subdivisions and houses. Oh, bullshit. So explain the difference. I use this, I use this example of subdivisions because it's easier for me to do it. Okay. I, wait, wait. Subdivisions have, all I have houses, excuse my language, by the way. Subdivisions have houses that are similar, all built within a period of time. Every piece of rural property is different. Thank you. But, it, it's unique, but there are some things that are the same in terms of what somebody is willing to pay for them. And that line, that line does not affect that. And you're saying that line should. I'm saying that the comprehensive plan went to some trouble to distinguish their areas that are intended by the comprehensive plan to be primarily agricultural. If the whole county is treated as, you can call it bullshit if you like, but I don't mind your language because you say it what you mean. Pretty much. But if you're saying we're going purely by the market value and not by anything having to do with the use of the, the existing use of the land. Now, wait a minute, there are, there are provisions for that. Okay, go ahead. So I was talking about the conservation easements. Yeah, uh, that's conservation use. Uh, I believe you're underneath the uh, conservation that program correct. already. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are three programs that are available that uh, basically <coughs> they're partial exemptions, what they amount to. Uh, there's the conservation use program, commonly referred to as the CUBA program. Uh, there's the Forest Land Protection Act program, which is com commonly referred to as FLIPA. And then there's preferential assessment. Now, uh, the first two are based on land values that are uh, derived by the state and handed down to us each year by regulation. Um, the preferential assessment is different as it, because what it does is uh, it actually changes your assessment level from on the property that's underneath the covenant. All three of these are covenant programs, by the way, so you'd have to sign a covenant saying that we will continue this property under this, this qualifying use for so many years. It's either 10 or 15, depending on which one you're in. <clears throat> How much that's problem that we have in this county under the preferential? Goodness gracious. Uh, I can't give you an exact acre, but I can tell you we've got about, we've got just under 1,100 properties underneath conservation use and FLPA and uh, two under well, most, most of it is conservation reserve and forest land protection. Correct. I, uh, I don't believe, some while back, uh, I don't think we had any under preferential treatment. Correct. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that really, there's, there's two, I mean, that, the preferential treatment is, is primarily beneficial to people like uh, somebody that's got a bunch of poker houses on a small track of land. Great. It's, preferential is not commonly, uh, it's not commonly used here especially. Uh, mostly it's used by people who have already exceeded their uh, limit on the conservation use program to get a, you know, what they can off their taxes because it changes your assessment level from 40% to 30%. Um, Conservation use program, um, you know, I don't know exactly how many we had this year, but we've had many people who were not already underneath the conservation use program sign up for it during this appeal process. Um, and just to go ahead and plug it now, what we're talking about, that is something that if any of you are, you know, if you've looked at that assessment notice and you're not already underneath the conservation use program, then you can sign up for that uh, conservation use or FLPA if you qualify um, in conjunction with your appeal or in lieu of. 
I would highly recommend that if anybody is considering doing that, to sign up in conjunction with the appeal because you want to always protect that right to to your appeal later on down the road. Um, you know, we can see what shakes out. And, you, know, you can always drop an appeal, but I would highly recommend that you always go ahead and file that appeal, especially since we're getting down to that August 10th deadline. Uh, but the conservation use program, what it does is it'll bring your land value down to uh, these. It's much, much, much lower than what we have. Um, but it's a state, like I said, it's a, it's a table that we get from the state. Uh, it breaks everything down into open land and woodlands with a productivity rating of one to nine, nine being the, the worst, one being the best. Um, and then your property value that you're taxed on, we'll still be tracking this entire time, we'll still be tracking the fair market value because we have to be able to show on the digest what our exemption amounts are. But um, on the, uh, the value that you pay your taxes on, that conservation use value, that FOPA value, it can only go up by 3%, or sorry, it can only change 3% 3 every year. Yeah, that's, all this is better in pages. So bring your assessed, your, your value to the office. Somebody will explain that to you in detail as it pertains to your specific property. Because what he said there, I understand part of it, but unless you're look, unless you're hearing it about your property, then it's, it's hard to follow sometimes. And I ask a question for clarification, Silas. And I, I don't know anybody who's on, on anybody's situation, but my, okay, I got 50 acres, so it's a, you know, it ain't the kind of road so. But I've had it 20 years. My my most recent assessment is basically five times what I paid for the property 20 years ago. There are no comparable sales in my area. I mean, basically, folks along there um, have held on to it. Most of it is family land and, and all. But I mean, mine was an arm's length sale. It was no nobody gave me anything, but fivefold in, in 20 years. I, and I'm under the covenant, so I realize my real estate taxes are not going up like they could. But but still, I believe that the increase in the value that the state has or the county has said is excessive. I, I do not believe my property has increased in value five times in 20 years. So when I when I posed the question, and the lady was nice as could be, she was trying to be helpful. But everything said on sales. I said, well, okay, how do you do this? Because there are no comparable sales in my area. And, and then she told me that, well, you're over. And, and I looked at my neighbors, you know, and, and, and values are all over the place. And, and they're based on sales. Well, there are no sales. And so, okay, how do we, how do, we do this? And my, I got a neighbor that's got next to me, his is about half of what mine is per acre. Well, his is less than 20 acres and yours is more than 20, you know, you're more than 20 acres. So it's not based on sales if you're more than 40 acres or 20 acres now, is that right? It's based on soil type. But but I'm confused now. Is it sale or is it soils type? And I don't understand now why a guy who's got 20 acres, we're valuing he as I'm not, I ain't got anything against my neighbor, but his valuation is half per acre what mine is. I, I find it hard to believe that somebody's going to pay me more twice per acre for 50 acres versus, you know, the, the, the inequality there. North, traditionally, don't smaller tracts sell for more per acre than larger tracts? Traditionally, yes. They, well, that's they, exactly the opposite uh, of the way it is in my in my area. Now, I'd, I'd have to, on a specific you example, I'd have to look at, but, uh, you know, because there may be a reason why. It could be one that, uh, you know, one of the common things that happens when folks come to us and they're seeing this outrageously different value from theirs right next door. One of the common things that has happened, and I'm not saying this is it, um, is that it was done, um, it, it was a, uh, it's a freeze value from it being appealed in the prior year. And whenever you appeal it, it that value is frozen for the year that you appealed it in in the following two years. So that could be 
where it's coming from. Um, did that neighbor just recently buy it? Uh, that's well, I mean, another there, thing. There's no sales in my in my area in, in 20 years, with okay. one exception. Well, that's that's another thing commonly just for everybody else's information that will come up is you know. Following a, the year after a arm's length transaction on a property the following year, the maximum value on that property is the arm's length transaction. And that's just for the one year after that arm's length transaction takes place. So, But uh, on yours, we'd have to look at what, what the specifics are because I don't know. Um, as far as uh, above 20 acres, you are correct. It is The valuation is based on soil type productivity, um, but it's those values that are assigned to those soil type productivities are derived from sales based on benchmark sales that had, you know, say uh, this one was open land four. Um, so you would use the open land four to derive this this value for, for that productivity and then you would have to trans you'd have to kind of extrapolate a value from that to populate over here in the areas where you don't have the sales, that's actually how they're used. Um, what y'all are saying, if I hear you right, you take the sales. Well, most of that is people selling you know, to the subdivision where you get a bloated price in certain areas. In certain areas. And they ain't all over the north part of the county. But then you extrapolate that and put it on everybody so you're in the paying taxes on what it could be if it's, but you know, you've got to have somebody wanting it to make it worth that. What I'm trying to say, no. is it no use come in there? Like if I'm just farming it, it ought not to be value for what I could sell it for as a subdivision. You understand? Well, on the ones that are, the large acre tract ones should not be used uh, in the sales if, if it's going to turn into, a, if it's going to be a neighborhood, if we know that ahead of time. Uh, you know that that all comes back to what we can find out in the sales verification process, and we don't always find out that much because uh, you know we can't force people to talk to us. Would, wouldn't uh, the conservation easement indicate that the owner doesn't intend to sub it up? You mean the conservation use program? Yes. That that would that would indicate that they don't intend to sub it But so why is this all this area up here that's a conservation use red? But that, that is based on sales of other properties that are for a similar use. There are no sales, as you just mentioned, in that area. And they have to be used. You, you can't have, you're going to have to think of Lowndes County as one big subdivision, maybe, if that makes it easier for everybody to understand. And when I say that, as in, it is a massive area that you have to be able to take a value from somewhere else and bring it over. We can't just go and revalue only properties around right where you had a sale. Or you'll wind up in the same instance that we've, we've been in where we haven't had a rural land reval since 2001. Well, let's look at these values sales. have changed since then. Yeah, I, I don't know. know. I think I was worth more 10 years ago than it is now. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I guarantee you. I wish somebody would come over me what they would be 10 years ago. But yet your value would be, you know, uh, it ain't going up 20%, it's like 400%. You know, that's, that's a lot of money. But my thing is, uh, Mud Swamp runs through it, and it's not worth two cents, really. There's nothing you can do with it. Man, my place more than double. My pure brain. mud swamp. You got to spill every finger. Right. <laughs> 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 the the, the, the hatch is coming back one day. Actually, you know, I can't speak to everybody's personal property because I don't know your specific properties. I, I what think I can that, say is I would recommend if you haven't already done it, appeal it. You know, that that gives us a chance to start looking at it. I, but until you appeal it, and that's not a hard process, just come. Well, right I went to the taxes that's often they're supposed to come out and reevaluate a bunch of stuff, look at it like. He was saying, well, I heard nothing from them. They were swamped. Did you sign an appeal? But am I correct in saying they if, if, that, if they the they value did. is set yeah. on land, yeah. type, on soil type, that how, how do you, how do we, I mean, how do you, Just, can we expect any adjustment? If somebody has said this soil type is worth this amount of money per acre, we don't care where it's at. There is potential for uh, adjustment if we come out and see that we 
you know, you can always have an error in uh, the soil type assignment, how much that we assigned it. Uh, it could have been assigned open and it was wooded. Uh, you know, those make differences. Um, there could be easements we're not aware of. There could be, uh, you know, uh, shape factors that may need to be put on it. Like if it's, you know, if you have a maybe a, um, something that's landlocked or something like that. Uh, there could be wetlands we're not aware of. You know, I mean, but it, that's things that we find out when we can sit down with you individually and look at the property. Yeah, here's here's one thing. To the a lot of this revaluation was done because we contracted with somebody, right? and they don't they're not as familiar with the county as we are. But not to do that would mean we'd have to hire somebody and have them on staff to to first look at things more closely, which we can't do with the staff we've got. And on a revaluation, um, I don't know how many people came in as part of that contract, but if we hire somebody so that we've got the people for a reevaluation every so many years, we've got to pay them and they got to get benefits. It's just, it would be more expensive than it's worth. I and a lot easier. I think benefits when it's in the breach. <laughs> 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 you have any data with you on the sales that were used on the sales of our part of land that were used to drive the DC values? Yes, that's going to be in the two sheet, uh, two different packets. Well, why, why, don't, why don't you discuss that? I've got a question along those lines. Um, and my disagreement is just the opposite. The value on my land was dropped. But when, and my soil type is the same as my neighbor's all the way around my circle. My land use is pasture. My neighbor's land use is pasture. One neighbor has a compound. They have four trailers and one house. Their land is valued higher than mine is per acre. What criteria do you use for, uh, it used to be equal all the way around, 5,000, 6,000 an acre. And now it's all over the place. And most of them are valued at more. Now, I understand the sales, which was the, supposedly the criteria for dropping the value on my land, the comparable sales. But what about all the rest of the, the circle, what, all the rest of the, my neighbors? Why did some go up? Why are some higher? You know, trying to answer Specific, uh, answer questions about specific properties here without all the benefits of being at the office is going to be difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. And the thing to do is come to the office. So if you've got somebody looking at your specific property. But my question is, what is the criteria when you've got the same soil type, when you've got the same land use? for a higher value on some and a lesser value on others. Uh, one I'd ask, um, what's the, what is the size of the property, what's the acreage of each property? Do you have an idea? Small, Small under five and under. Okay. Um, so all of them are five and under or just yours? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, it should be um, the way the schedule's been intended normally to work would be for, for a, uh, as the acreage goes up in the small acres tracks, or the per acre value go down without having the total acreage value or total property value go down below one that's a smaller acreage. Um, so I mean that, you know, if, if everything's in correctly, then it sounds like we have the, you know, some an unintended, there's a potential for error there. Um, so we need to look at that because it shouldn't, be calculating on an even basis at a different at a lower value if it's smaller. Sorry, smaller. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, but definitely, again, that'd be another one for us. We just have to look at all of them around you and see what the, you know, the individual 
specifics are on the properties. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll talk about it. And, and there you get into the crux of the matter. It's not individual properties one by one. What we're here mostly to ask about, I think, and that's somebody tell me if I'm not getting this right, is what, you know, what are the general procedures that ended up with these very strange results? And we're hearing, I think, kind of odd answers. On one hand, you can't take into account that it's an agricultural region. On the other hand, as you pointed out, the conservation easement, the conservation use, use, you say indicates it's agricultural, but then you say that you didn't take that into account when applying comparables, even though there were no comparables in that region. It, you know, this, this may sound sensible to you, but I got to say to me, it doesn't very much. Well, in applying comparables, I know you said, well, think of Lowndes County all as one subdivision. We're, we're all in one community. But applying a comparable from down in Lake Park on a big old fat road and saying they're yellow and us on a little skinny road at the north of the county is red doesn't seem right. Hey, can we talk about that one for a moment? I mean, y'all don't seem to want us to mention that. This yellow area down near Lake Park, you don't know about that, right? Bill Gates. Okay. And it's on US 41. Yet when we look at this map here, that's yellow. Yet that was used, two of those properties were used as benchmark values for revaluing this area up here in the north end of County Red. How does that make sense? Now, as far as the, uh, whenever you're using the benchmark sales for accessibility, what you're trying to do is to take a, a value from an accessibility. So you want to take it over from this column where the accessibility is to extrapolate a productivity value in a separate accessibility. So you set your areas based on the accessibility and then you actually move your table values based on taking it from an A3 to a to a two, to a be full. I mean, you know, that, 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 that's how you, I mean, it's, it's, there's not an easy way to explain that other than you have to use the benchmark sales to transfer from column to column the values uh, on the, the rural land. How, how is US 41 South not more accessible than a local county? Now, accessibility is not about access itself. It's about geographic location. It's called accessibility in the appraiser's procedure manual, and that's why we call it accessibility. It's not about how accessible is my problem. Okay, what do you mean by geographic? So, whenever you're looking at certain sales that seem to be having a trend for themselves mm -hmm. and to be a market area, that would be an accessibility assignment. Which comes back to the same question you're asking. This north edge of the county where there are no comparables, how can there be a trend? Again, that's going to be based on when we looked at it and looked at the, the appraiser's opinion of the market areas. You know, they were these market areas were looked at first with the value with the market sales. Then they were looked at with the a knowledge of the area. And the those market areas were re, you know, kind of the boundaries were refined. If people from consultants were hired from out of the area, what what knowledge of our area would they have? That, that was done with you know that was done in uh, uh, one of our appraisers in, on staff actually helped with that. They actually helped with helping define those market areas and change them. Who draws those lines? The data. I mean the data, and then you have the, the fine tuning done by your your staff. And you say it's not about roads, but here on page 19, accessibility delineations, five times road frontage. Five yeah. times on the same page. That, that is done based on, you know, is it inside an area, you have an accessibility, and inside of that one accessibility, you change, you give a second accessibility based for all the ones that aren't on, like, a paved road. So that, that's where that comes from. Notice that, Marcus, a paved road drives up the valuations, which then drives development. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So as a matter of fact, hmm? 
Yeah, <laughs> the paved road, the paved road makes a difference because so if you've got a dirt road, and county zoning will not let you divide that piece of property into more than three parcels. I don't care how many acres it is. If you're on paved road, zoning will let you do that um, into half acre lot if you've got a uh, water system and a sewer system. If you've got county water and sewer, you'll do it in even smaller lots. Uh -huh. So yeah, the dirt roads make a difference in terms of development. Which is the issue. And then when you drive this red area right up through the existing agricultural area where the county is system on the South Potato Roads, you're driving development into the agricultural areas of the county where you don't even have any comparables. I don't think that we're driving it anywhere. I think what you've got is market conditions and zoning. How can you have market conditions where there are no comparables? Property is property. What you, when you say comparables, do you want in the same under the same bed sheet? Yes. No. Property is property. When you say that, what I'm hearing is the whole county is a subdivision, and I don't mean in your no, no, sense no. of no, 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 no. That's that's. We, we got to find some way to get this to get this much information down to something that is semi understandable to some dummy like me. Well, a lot of dummies and, in the and you're, 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 we're talking about the value of individual farmland, and you're talking about the fact that you don't like development in certain places, and you're not sure about the way that the value, the value is done, because you're trying to apply one thing to the whole county and accusing us of doing the same thing, and we're not. You've got a different agenda than everybody else here. I, I, not from what I'm hearing. People don't like their land being revalued when there's no local basis for the revaluation. Did I hear that wrong? Okay, I'm with that. I thought they used to use, like, what is used for? You know, like, if you're farming it, you know, it's worth this, you know, if it's subdividing it's worth this, you know. That's well, our end of the county over there, uh, where I live, you know, they have pushed away. They don't want subdivisions over there. They don't run county water and sewer out there. They don't run all this luxuries out there to drive prices up. But then y'all raise them up anyway. Mm -hmm. On our tax basis, mine's up four times of last year to this year. One place went from 265 to 850000 now, I think that's a little overboard. I don't care if it's four years. But that side of the county is pushed away from development. If I'm wrong, you tell me. They want it all up there around 84 and north and everywhere up there. They don't run water and sewer down Owsley Road and Rocky Ford Road. So we're not as valuable as this land y'all got up there where you got all the water and sewer running all that way. But our, our property is going up like it is. And I'm into conservation. But if they ever do away with it, I'm not going to be able to pay my tax. Yeah, I understand. Um, yeah, on that, you know, again, I And there hasn't been a piece of property sold out there in that neighborhood in 10 years or 15. I'm going to be sounding like a broken record on a lot of this, but that's something if you haven't already appealed, please go ahead and I'm a fan. So if I was going to write the article for the VDT, I should write down everyone who got a re-evaluation and is unhappy with it should run down before August 10th and file an appeal. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> really? Um, is that appeal date for all properties? And that's what I was fixing to say. It, 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 you know, they need to look at their notice um, because the only properties that have an uh, appeal date of, eight, of August 10th are going to be your rural land properties because we did that rural land revamp. Right. And then the commercial industrial properties. Right. That right. was the other revamp that we did this year. Now we did also do residential reevaluations as well um, in, in neighborhoods that you know we the sales indicated we needed some adjusting. I think we did about somewhere around 6, 6,800 of those properties this year. Um, but they got an earlier assessment notice this year. So 
But when you appeal, when you file the appeal, we have to look at it first. And it would be a good idea to come up to the office and, and say, why is it this way? Because we will have looked at it. Because when it goes before the Board of Tax Equalization, we've got to present why we think it's this way. We've got to present comps. If we can't do it, we lose. But I would go, I would come up to the office after you file the appeal, come up to the office and say, defend this. Why did you do it this way? But we can't discuss individual property here or even general trends without more knowledge than we've got. You know, there's a piece of property out there. I live off of Indian Ford Road, and there was a piece of property that was up for auction back in February, 250 acres back in that swamp, and they couldn't even get $12,000 for 250 acres. And I got just as much swamp as they did. It's like I said, <coughs> I've never been up there and hadn't heard a word from me all well, You filed the appeal. Yeah. But I uh, miss G G a, a, a general question, if I might. Larger oh, tracts are based, or, or that, the, the, the assessment is based on soil type. Correct. Is, is that so is that value for soil type applied equally across the board to all large tracts in the county or is the fact and I, I think that I think you'll agree that, that maybe property on a highway in you know some area it is is more valuable per acre than somebody like me who lives down a dirt road with no access or Tom's got a mansion, but y'all might need to look at my mansion. The accessibility you know, we well. <laughs> that we've been talking about, well, also, that, that's kind of like a location modifier for that. So, for yeah. the large acre track. so, so the basic rate per acre, depending on soil type, is applied across to everybody in the county, but you're saying it's already modified due to location and how accessible it is to a road and that type thing, or is Generally that? Generally correct, yes. But there, the there may be just well throw the soil type away. Well, we, we can't. We're 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 absolutely. You know, this you're going to by location and accessibility and all that. You know? Well, when I say no accessibility, again, that's that's basically it's a location. In the case of the large acre tracks, it's acting the way it acts is kind of like a lo a location modifier. For that, I, I got a question about that. Which is more accessible, Hammer Road or Cat Creek Road? Yeah. Of course, he just said that, Loki, that, that accessibility is not based entirely on roads, that it's a modifier. Okay, tell me what is the modifier? That you, you, go, you keep going back to individual areas and properties, and without all the information in the office, it's difficult to talk about it. Now, you kept shushing me. Can I finish my question? No. <laughs> okay, try to stop me. I'm sorry, I just said that to irritate you. Didn't work. Notice the big red area. I'm looking at page 21 here. And then right under where it says barren, it's a big yellow area. And that's Cat Creek Road running right up the middle of that. Now, I got to praise the staff down at the tax assessor's office, as I think it was Jerry did previously, that they're very helpful and cooperative. And I asked them, why is that? They said, well, because there's a particularly large tract there, and we decided that everything that was on the same road as that large tract should be in that other category. <laughs> Who owned it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to make a guess? I already know. <laughs> And right in the middle of that, there's a Can't red road area. Can't be knife road now. <laughs> <laughs> On roads going to it. Oh, oh hell and back in all our area over there where we live. But, hey, that, huh? just, that just figured out what you were talking about. <laughs> Let me ask you. Uh, <laughs> I just want to come back to your radical area. <laughs> this is something that might well, be a visible concern to me. It's just like Thomas said, his values have been redone. And it's considerably uh, almost half or twice as much. But in my opinion, I don't care that much. It's not going to bother me. Is what's the bottom line out here? How much I'm going to get taxed for? Like well, it says on on my, it was yeah, about double. But 
My taxes are just about the same. In that respect, I'm happy. But what what's gonna happen in the? Are we go we go? How long we? What what's this? You know, tremendous increase gonna cause us down the road, or, or what? What are we gonna be paying? That's what counts for me, in my opinion. Well, so I don't know what. Uh, I mean, I can't s s say what will happen, but you know, I mean, you know, as long as you stay in the conservation use program, then I'm assuming you're going to be. You know, you're still going to be hit. It's going to be the three percent every year. I mean, what well, three percent in ten years is how much? <laughs> but, but basically, I mean, that's that's the, that's the that's that's that that is based on the program. The conservation use program is only allows a three percent increase on the conservation use value. So, um, and that's what y'all. I mean, most of you, I think, have already been living with for quite a while. You, you've been doing that already. Um, now, if you were ever, the, when it would become an issue for you is when it, if you ever breached that code. Um, you know, and when you breach it, you know, there's, there's a couple of different ways to breach one. Um, you know, there's several different ways to breach one, but they're, you know, don't worry, you know, like if, it, you know, when someone passes away, that does breach the covenant, but it's with no penalty. You know, that way the heirs are allowed to do what they will with the property without getting penalized. But they can sign back up for it. They can. Um, but it gives everybody the option. You know, um, now as far as uh, you know, but if you decide to take it and turn it into a subdivision, that's going to breach it, and that's going to be a breach with a penalty, and that's where that increased value is going to come in because you're going to have to pay twice the savings. Um, that's you know because you've signed that covenant saying I'm going to stay in this program for X number of years. Usually, the conservation is going to be ten. For course land protection is going to be fifteen. You can't raise that three percent every year. We, we don't have a choice. That's the, you're paying based on, you know, conservation use and land values are going to be based on the scheduled table values that we receive from the Department of Revenue every year. And that's, you know, it's, it's got a, um, that table value has a, it's got a couple of actually uh, uh, components that they're legislative. I mean, you know, it's, it, there's, a, there's some modifiers, you know, that come through every year. It's not based on actual market values. So that's why it's so much lower than their market values are. Um, now as far as what you know, I've recommended the board to do is, you know, where we're at right now is because everybody got hit with this massive increase after, you know, best of, the best of our knowledge, it's been 14 years. It could have been more since all the rural <coughs> land has been done as one. Um, so what we're going to try to do is try to do a maintenance program on a yearly or uh, you know, two or three year basis to keep you off from ever having to get this massive sticker shock. Um, you know, because it does nobody any favors. You know, how do you want to eat it? You know what I'm saying? Do we want to eat it small bites at a time or do we want to just get the stuff thrown in our face once every decade? I think you're not listening to what people are saying. The revaluation for a lot of people's property makes no sense. I understand. And uh, the only thing that we can really, I mean, you know, all the questions or the majority of the questions I've been hearing, it's going to require you to come in and sit down with our staff and let's look at what's going on. There are, anytime you have a reevaluation, there's going to be errors. There was errors in our information and our values. Prior to the reevaluation, we have over 48,000 properties. You have errors, but the errors prior to were based on you had old. You know, you, we came. You know, you had turnover of employees. You had um, just general data entry errors. Um, all that stuff gets wiped out. That may have been holding values way down, or may have had them overinflated, and then you come back to more of a a baseline but you still will have because some of those may have had some factors on it or something like that that needed to stay yes but yes. we had no way of knowing but you keep saying we treated the whole county as one thing and used comparables from Lake Park and Northside County yet each person should come in and individually contest what happened one by one but the issues here are not on individual properties again all I can 
all we can say is, you know, I mean, anybody who has a problem with their value at this point in the game, the only thing that can be done is you can appeal it. And I mean, I encourage you, if you disagree with the value, please appeal it. So you're really not listening. What is yes, all he can? That, there, there's nothing we can do at this stage. Uh, well, I would like to thank Mike Hill for acknowledging, yes, some of us do have a different agenda than apparently tax commissioner's office does. What did I say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 I didn't say tax commissioners. He said tax yeah, commissioners. Sort of Excuse me. <laughs> 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 Once again, Felicia Williams, the tax commissioner, had nothing to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to send that check to that bill. <laughs> 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 That's what's going to hurt. When you say benchmark sales, are you talking this is just about the high sales or what are you talking about? No, it's, it's the ones that you're going to be using in the sales they will be right there in that packet. Does that one say large or uh, small? Yeah, it says large. Okay, or, and how many acres is your property? I got two or three. Oh. Uh, anything over 20 acres is going to be on the large acre track schedule, so that will be the information used for it. Anything under 20 acres will be um, will be based on the small acre track schedules, and that will be it's a little bit smaller. I didn't know so many people were coming. I was told about 10 to 12. So <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised today. But, um, You're very popular. Yeah, I know. I, uh, I have another question about calculation. Well, I'm sort of imagining in my mind, here are the comparable, so property sold for $2,000 an acre that was type tiffed in something. And so if it was bigger than 20 acres, we apply that price. Was some real formula used? and then applied to every property? Or was each property looked at as an individual to say, that's on this road and something? I mean, was it a, a, a formulaic thing where everybody got the, he got, I don't know, but he only got double and, and Jerry got four times, so maybe it wasn't a formula. Um, it, it, it's not. Yes and no, I guess is the answer. Um, you know, it, the inf based on the information, you know, the, one, the, the properties that really got looked at the hardest were the ones that were used in the, uh, the, in the sales that were used. Those were the ones that were physically reviewed. Um, everything well, else was based. sales on Cat Creek. Yeah, that seems to have gotten looked at pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> everything else is based on the information that was already in our camera system. You know, we can't realistically go out without doing the mass, the, the mass valuation um, effort like uh, I guess y'all saw, now I wasn't here then, uh, what was it, around 2000? Was that about correct? Does that sound right to anybody? Whenever, or was it 99 or somewhere in there? When, when, the, state, when the state department revenue rolled in and said you really go along? Yeah, and it was like a million dollars or something like that to hire an outside firm to come in. What we did was, you know, if you guys will help us with this end, We'll work on this end because we, you know, the staff we have, our time is spent mostly with keeping up with the sales that are going on, you know, the, the administrative work and everything that's going on day to day, keeping up with the appeals. You know, these folks, they don't have to, they don't, you know, they, they don't get interrupted by a call, you know, and it's not a, we're not complaining, but, you know, we're constantly dealing with the public, we're constantly doing work <laughs> such as our sales price reviews working on our, you know, our parcel, parcel inspections, trying to get all these properties inspected, you know, on a, some sort of a routine basis. You can't, um, the staff is not there to do what the State Department of Revenue required the county to do. The, the county had been you know, back in the digest every year, just saying, okay, it'll go up about this much. And they applied that all the way across the board. Finally, the State Department of Revenue got sick of that and they said, you will evaluate. And that was way back, right? Yeah, that was way back. You will evaluate every piece of property in the county. And that was back when a million dollars was a million dollars. And so the county had to pay a million bucks for somebody to come in and do all, every piece of property. And the reason I mention that is we don't have the staff for that. I don't think we ought to have the staff for that. Bill Slaughter doesn't think we ought to have the staff for that. <laughs> Well, well, that was why my question, though, was did you just apply a formula if you're 20 acres till 400? How big? How, what, what, to 4,000 to whatever? If it's a formula, it's a five pages of criteria. 
and you're looking for a simplified answer and it doesn't exist. Well, he gave a simplified answer, but he hired a consultant. He used a bunch of formulas, but it was according to geographical areas that were set by the staff. Did I hear you wrong? That's in a nutshell. That, that's kind of how that and the geographical areas include this area where Johnny Hamrick lives. It's red, right in the middle of the north of the county. And it's still very little to the east here on Cat Creek Road. <laughs> Those were not set by a formula. They were set by somebody on the staff saying these geographical areas are different. Correct. As far as the geographical areas, those were set by between the staff and the consultant looking at what the when they were looking at the sales that they had. There are no sales in either the areas I just <laughs> we understand, I understand that, but so we have to, we have a to. Screen. It has nothing to do with those areas being okay. different. Staff set them different for unknown reasons. No. What are the um, reasons? If you want to know the reasons why, I, I believe you spoke with the, the staff member who did that, did you, correct? That's correct. Um, she was very helpful and cooperative. And she had, you know, whenever we did this, my life isn't the rural land rebound. Tonight it is. Our lives are. I, I, <laughs> I understand. But I mean, I mean, as far as at the office, I have not been, you know, the person who has much more detailed knowledge on what happened in this rebound is the who, you know. Well, I'll tell you what she said, which is pretty much what I said before, because it was a particularly large property. How large is particularly large? Who sets that? It's based on the appraiser's judgment. <laughs> okay, the then. So these other very large properties down here in next to Lake Park, <laughs> they don't seem to be in red, even though they're right on the US 41 South. Again, they're they're considered to be a different accessibility as far as the base value and the location adjustment. Location adjustment adjusted for what is this location adjustment for? It's based on the sales in the area. There in are the general sales. area. Okay. There are 20. Uh, how many sales are in this thing? There are no sales in the north edge of the county that we've been talking about. Correct, but we right. believe that it's a similar market area. You can't have you a sale. You believe it's a or similar or market or area or right there. You believe it's the same market area as where you want to develop. What if in a two square mile area there are no sales and there are sales all around it or similar property? Do you not adjust the properties in that two square miles because there are no sales in there? If that area... Would, that, would you just leave those alone? If that area is primarily agricultural, it's clearly separated by a river, which doesn't even show up on your maps, and that has been designated in the comprehensive plan as agriculture, and you've got a whole bunch of people that have got conservation use, yes. That is what we're talking about. Or in other people's case, where you're on Mud Creek, where, like, so we're going to develop that, or we've heard a number of similar issues. Again, I'm going to be repeating myself here, but uh, you you got to bring your specific issues up in the appeal process. Who can deal with these general issues? The general, you're talking about the general issues that you've been bringing up here? Yeah, yes, uh, if my mouth was moving. Was my yeah. mouth moving? Yeah. It, Too it, much. Um, <laughs> the, the reevaluation.